Hi there. How's it going? Good. What about you, Kamin? Good. Hey everybody, Calvin. Good to see you, Raphael. Hello, Angel. Hey there. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. Oh, wow. <sighs> Calvin, your camera is so nice. <laughs> My camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it, it's a it's a uh, one of the Sony point and flick ones. But uh, I got yeah. an adapter that you know mm. does the video out of it. <laughs> Just picked one of those up for my iPhone. I was thinking about setting up. Um, I'm curious if it ends up being a better resolution or at least a better focal length than the uh, laptop camera. Yeah, it's, it's a shame how crappy the laptop cameras are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we have three <laughs> yeah, sensors of... now. It shouldn't be the other way. <laughs> yeah, instead of adding that third like camera or the fourth camera to the like iPhone Pro, mm -hmm. why don't you just add a couple up there? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Danny. All right. Hello. Danny, the mustache gets better and better. I was just looking at it this morning and I was like, I bet you Ollie, my girlfriend, is ready for me to do something about this. <laughs> All right, I'm going to drop this in. We'll get started at probably by past the hour. So folks see the uh, comments from uh, OCI land in uh, WG Wesson uh, Black. Pretty cool. Yeah, I couldn't, um, I couldn't review them in the, in the document, but yeah, it looks pretty nice. Like all the details about the specification, how to integrate it with the, I mean, a better work with the runtimes. So. I think the big call out is uh, artifacts are not to be run by run times. And so we got to figure out there, we have ways forward. Um, but I think uh, we may want to look at uh, other solutions, you know, possible in the future, but figure it out. It's good enough to be blocked. David, I, I was starting to look at your uh, PR for uh, in the work thing for the uh, go back <laughs> through it, right? And I, did, I, did it get cobwebs I, everywhere? <laughs> Well, I'm so I, sorry. I, well, no, I'm, 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 uh, I was starting to look at integrating with OCI as a storage layer. So I was trying to figure out what the convention was for the manifests and for this. So it sounds like there's some activity in figuring that out, right? Yeah, I'll share some stuff in Slack uh, so that it's, it's out for everybody. I, I had been working on a little, a little tool to do stuff like that, um, but there's also some details. Uh, Let's do this in the meeting. Awesome. Hey, welcome everybody. It is just about five past the hour. 
And we are here at the WASM Working Group, part of the CNCF under TAG Runtime. Uh, we abide by the CNCF Code of Conduct, uh, which means be kind to each other. Um, in discussion, please raise your hand. You will be recognized. And uh, let's just, uh, let's have some fun. All right, cool. Uh, we do have an agenda today. Um, the initial agenda we have is a uh, presentation to Taylor Thomas for WASM Cloud. And then WASM Workers Server, um, I'm not sure if Angel or uh, I'll do it. Rafael, uh, Rafael? Oh, fantastic. Um, and then afterwards, uh, we'll just give a quick rundown of the KubeCon talks. Uh, before I get started, does anybody have any public service announcements that they would like to uh, bring up? Were we saving okay. any like what's new and notable in WASM for the end? I know we've been taught, wanting to talk about news, so I just wanted to know if we're doing that at the end or now, not well. Let's do it at the end to save time or make sure there's space for folks to tell their story. Uh, we're doing a uh, WARG release on Friday. Um, so uh, we're calling it a 0 0.2 version release. It's the first. Excellent. Release. Congratulations. Awesome. Uh, let's uh, new and notable. Uh, I'll mark you down. Please uh, give the spiel and uh, new and notable for you know cool features there. I'm sure a lot of people would love to hear that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, anybody want to say hello? That's new to the community or new to this little subsection of the community. I can do it. I know uh, some of you uh, in person, but I is the first time that I'm joining this group here. Uh, I'm really glad to be here, of course. So yeah, it's great to to see you uh, here on this group. Yeah, likewise, I haven't been to this group, but I know most most of the people here, in one form or another. But I'm just I'm really thrilled to be here. Yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, Ivan Font. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. I met some of you at WasmCon, uh, but this is my first time joining this group and uh, happy to be here and, and collaborate. Uh, yeah, I think this is Calvin and I's first time attending. Uh, we uh, tend to be pretty involved in the uh, WARG registry work, um, but yeah, this is our first time attending this meeting. And we'll both be at uh, Wasm Day at KubeCon. So I'd love to see some more of you guys there. Going once, going twice, the gavel is pounded. Okay, fantastic. Thank you all. Uh, it's so good to have everybody here. Uh, without further ado, I would like to welcome Taylor uh, to speak to us about Wasm Cloud and uh, uh, actually, before we do that, anybody want to take notes? Anybody volunteers? I can take some notes today. You are amazing. Thank you. Taylor, you are up, sir. Sweet. For better or for worse, I'm going to be here for you all. So let me go ahead and um, share my desktop. Make sure I'm sharing the right one. Okay. So um, I will do this in very few slides and a few um uh and then more demos so um i'm i'm here to just talk a little bit about what wasm cloud is um we had been talking as a as a group last time about making sure we we had time for all the cncf projects to um talk about the different things they were doing with WebAssembly. and so yeah wasm cloud is a cncf project we're getting close to incubating um Sorry, uh, sandbox. Yes, incubating. Sorry, I was making sure I remember the tiers right. And um, we are really focused on um, being an application runtime. So you have your WebAssembly runtimes. Think like Wasm Time and Wasm Three and Whammer and those kind of things. Those are Wasm runtimes. They actually run the uh, WebAssembly itself. And Wasm Cloud runs on top of those runtimes to provide a way to run all of your applications. So its main focus is, is basically what I'm showing it up here on the um, on the slide of it's really just a WASM orchestrator with declarative deployments. And I'll show that today in the demo. It is meant to be completely cloud edge and platform agnostic. 
Uh, it is not tied to any specific architectures or anything like that. Basically, anywhere Wasm Time can go, we can go. Um, and we'll even be able to add more stuff in the future, you know, like Whammer and those kind of things to run in even smaller places. And we we basically take the idea of um, the component model and we make it distributed. So you can securely access these different capabilities, these these pieces of functionality in a way that's entirely like like it says here, hot swappable and um, completely detached from your dependency. So there's this idea that we have, if you've if you followed us at all before about we, we remove all these non-functional requirements. So I'll show some of that today as well. And then we really focus on having like this underlying seamless compute mesh that uh, with automatic load balancing, failover, RPC, all the stuff you'd expect from that. Um, where it's basically connecting everything that you have, no matter where it's running or what it's running. And so that's that, that the other key thing we want to point out is that we do consume a lot of basically other CNCF things. We use OCI to store stuff. Um, our declarative things are, are done using the OAM model, the open application. Um, and then we also use cloud events and NATs um, and open telemetry all underneath here. So we're our goal is to be very, very open and able to integrate with everyone else. We truly believe we're better together. Um, and I'll actually talk about how some of these things like can be used in between different platforms. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to stop that um, and just go to demoing some stuff. So I'm going to start off with just what it looks like from the, from the get-go, and then I'm going to show a basic demo. We have a command line tool called WASH, which is the web um, Wasm Cloud uh, Shell, which is why we have that fun name of wash. And when you get it, it's actually as simple as saying wash up and it's going to go ahead and start up everything for you. So we wanted to kick the tires mode to be really, really easy. And then we also have a, um, we also have a, a nice experimental thing called the um, washboard or the wash UI. And we have that as a command. Um, oops, I forgot the experimental plug. So this is, oops, that did not go to the right place. So this allows us to kind of see an overview of everything that's going on. Obviously I have nothing running because I just launched this up, um, but this is like, this is what it comes built in with. And then you're able to come on here and, and start things up based on, um, based on your needs. So we're, we're working on, on adding more features here because right now you're able to just say like, okay, what thing am I connecting to? Oh, and that's because I forgot to set it with mode. Anyway, that's entirely, this is a, a new thing we, we just released out as we've been updating our, our host. I just wanted to show that real quick. Um, for the demo itself, I'm going to be using um, Cosmonics UI, but I'm going to be very clear here. This entire, everything here is being done with Wasm Cloud. I'm just using it because it's convenient. I have everything set up for demos on there already. And um, so yeah, anything I'm showing here, you can do with just plain Wasm Cloud. So the first thing I want to talk about though, is the code. So we have, I'm going to be running just a super simple example today. Um, that's, I'm, I'm not trying to show anything complex. We've only got 15 minutes and I'm five minutes in. So I'm, I'm keeping it super simple. Um, if you want to see more complex demos, feel free to reach out later. But um, essentially we have these um, things we call actors. They are WebAssembly components. Um, and I'm going to be I'm going to be perfectly honest because if, if someone is saying other than this right now, they're probably fudging something or lying, um, is you, we're all working towards the preview, to, like making sure we've landed WASI preview two um, to be able to use it and fully use all the component goodies. So parts of our ecosystem are still in the old style that has Wasm Cloud specific libraries and parts are in this new style that don't have any Wasm Cloud specific dependencies. What I want to call out here is this is the kind of promise of was of uh, wasm in general there are no dependencies here on on wasm cloud itself and so why this is important is that this component that i'm going to be demoing today can technically be run on for example the next presentation the wasm the wasm workers the, the things are going on these are the kinds of things that we do not want to lock people into our platform so if you want to take this and you want to go run it you know on wws great if you want to go run this in like the spider lightning stuff that Microsoft's doing, that's great. You can do that too. We don't want to lock people in here. And so everything we've been working on has been trying to push towards seeing that there's no um, Wasm Cloud specific dependencies. And like I said, the, the old stuff, just so you know what it looks like to compare it, is we had things that were, it was still very simple, but we had some Wasm Cloud specific things that were, that were in our dependency tree. 
So we've gotten rid of those with the component model. And so we're going to be showing, but just be aware that like anything else right now that's trying to use WASI Preview 2, they're going to kind of be in a state of flex. And this is, we're, we're one of those. So anyway, that's just the um, simple, like what, what we're going to run. This is a KV counter. Uh, it's going to take an incoming HTTP request. It's going to serve up a UI that's embedded in the WebAssembly module. And it's also going to increment a counter inside of a database. But you'll notice here that there is nothing that says which database it's connecting to. It doesn't have any idea of a connection string. It just is going to increment. In fact, if I bring it down here where we actually do that, um, we just have this increment function. And this increment function is over in our, where'd it go? I don't know where it went. Anyway, we have we have an increment function in here, and all it's doing is just incrementing the the bucket value. And um, I'm really surprised I don't know where that's at. Um, of course, I. I don't know where it went. Anyway, so we have this. We have oh, there it is. Sorry, atomic increment. Sorry, I knew it was somewhere in the um, WASI thing. So these are just types. These are types that are coming from like wit bind gen from the actual thing. So we're not there. There's no there's no idea here of what it's connecting to, just that it's talking to a key value contract. So I'm actually going to go ahead and take this and show you the declarative manifest of how we do it. Um, that was what you were seeing right here. This is the um, the what we call WADAM or WADAM um, Web Assembly or uh, WASM Cloud Deployment Manager. Um, this is meant to be the thing that most people expect to have, which is, um, which is just a declarative way to do, to deploy your applications. So I'm going to take this and this is just going to use our, our basic like key value example that I'm showing here. And then I'm going to play around with it some more. Um, I'm actually going to do two different versions here. So I'm I'm going to actually save this and I'm going to do one more. Oops. Don't tell me my network's dying on me. Am I still connected? <laughs> okay. Let's make sure I didn't like kill something while I was sitting here. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do it locally. So um Actually, no, I'm just going to go ahead and do it manually. So I, I don't know why I'm having, I, I tempted the demo gods by doing this all live. So what this does work most of the time. Yeah, exactly. And what, what this manifest is saying to do, and I'm going to just do this all manually so you can see it happen, but it's saying, hey, I have an, an actor I'm going to run. It needs to be linked. It, there's going to be one of them running in this case. I need to be linking to Redis is what I'm going to start off with. I'm going to actually start off with a different one. And I'm um, loading things up on an HTTP server. So I'm exposing my I'm exposing the port on um, 8081 on the thing that it's running. And I need to run these two, what are called capability providers. These are the non-functional requirements. They're the things that satisfy these, these interfaces that are defined in WIT. So like this is the one that says, I'm going to serve up your HTTP content. And this is the one that says, I'm going to connect the key value for you. So once again, sorry that this is not... Um, not working that way. Yeah, see, that's not working. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here and show it in the uh, the view manually. So what I'll start off with is creating the actor. And that is just this KV counter that I was talking about. And I'm going to run it on um, the, the host that's running in the cloud. That's what all this is right here. So um, I'll go ahead and do... Make sure that one's the one running. Um, so now, now that's running for me. And I'm going to connect it and expose it to the internet via um, an HTTP server. Now, this is something that's interesting because I'm running on Cosmonic. This is Cosmonic's ingress. But my code doesn't have to change. I don't have any special things. This works with any HTTP server implementation. So I'm able to come over here and connect this and create it. And perfect. I have a, a new link for this. So then I'm going to now... Um, spin up um, another provider, and I'm going to actually show how this can swap around. So we have this, um, uh, we have a built-in key value store. This could be Dynamo. We have things for like Dynamo. Um, you can build your own for whatever key value store you have. Once again, just running this as a as a straightforward like example running on on, on what I have here. And so I'm going to actually use this as a um, key value store here. So now I've set up this application, 
And I have, um, let's see, is this the one? No, okay, I'm gonna create a new wormhole for this. This just exposes it to the internet for me. Okay, it is this one, this one. Okay, anyway, so we're gonna see, make sure I got the right one. Okay, so there we go. KV counter that I have running. Um, and I can like increment the value and it's going to increase inside of my database right now. Okay, that's all cool and good. But one of the things about the component model, like I've been emphasizing, is that you can change out your dependencies and we can do this at a distributed level. So I'm gonna change this and I'm going to run another provider, um, which I'll just run my Redis provider on my host that's actually running on my machine. So when you saw me run Cosmo, I'm just running Wasm Cloud locally. So I have a cloud server that's actually running over in the East Coast. And then I have um, I have my host that's running locally here on my machine. So I'm gonna start that over here. And you're actually gonna see this. I'm gonna run Redis server over here so that you know, like I have a database running locally here and we'll wait for this to start. Oops, hold on. Sorry, I have this weird thing. I'll talk to you Microsoft people about it later. Microsoft does not like delivering content to my IP address directly. So in case you're wondering about weird networking issues, that's what I deal with. So I just use a VPN to get around that. Let's try that one more time because that's going to take a while for that first request. I really am tempting those um, those uh, <laughs> demo gods today. I did not make the right sacrifice to uh, the um, to the demo gods. I didn't cut my hand with a stick of RAM and put blood on the altar. Okay. Okay, let's try that again. Sorry, I completely kicked that when I... Okay, now we'll give it a second. Sorry, I had to download the bytes. And there we go. Okay, sorry for the uh, for the thing there. Um, now what I'm gonna do is actually terminate the link here between um, my built-in key value and, the one, and I'm going to relink it with this Redis key value store. Um, I'm not gonna provide any values here because it just defaults to localhost. And so now it's going to connect to my local Redis data store. Um, so I'll come back over here. And if I refresh this, provided that my internet, yep, see, so now it's back down to one because it's the new Redis server. I just spun it up. Now, for sake of time, I'm going to stop there, but I could also swap out the HTTP server. I could run the HTTP server on my machine, or I could run it on a different machine. And you can basically add, like, this is an entirely flat network topology. I could be connecting this to, like, I could have things running in Azure, things running in my home lab, things running in, in AWS in Europe. Like, there's all these different things that can be going on. And once again, the focus is we don't want to lock you in. We have all this goodness, but we don't want to say, like, okay, well, you have to use Wasm Cloud to get all that goodness. You'll get all the, the cool goodness of the the things from Wasm Cloud of being able to send it across different places. Um, but like the actual core component here that's running can then be run on any other system. And that's exactly what we want people to have. We don't want people to be locked in because that's what has been the, the model for so long. And that has a lot of like gravity and problems. This allows people to be flexible in the ways they deploy it. So to tidy this up, I just wanted to go through like, um, oops, started over. So what, what is it good for? Like, what, what are we good at? What should, we, I always like to say like, what should you use Wasm Cloud for? What should you not use Wasm Cloud for? Um, it's very good for distributed data locations. So if you have data in multiple areas, very good thing to do with this because it can be a, a global mesh. Um, then you have this, uh, this concept of heterogeneous environments. Wasm's good for this in general. Wasm Cloud's very good, especially if you're connecting this. If you need to run something on like a cell tower or a power station or whatever, and then you have like a central processing thing inside of a cloud or a local data center, Wasm Cloud's very good at that. Um, it's also very good for network constrained apps where you might have like firewall rules or other things because all that's required is that single essentially NATS connection between everything. Um, if you need multi-region or cloud, the, the failover is automatic. I didn't have time to show that today. But if you run this in like Azure and GCP side by side, if one of them has an outage, it will automatically start failing traffic over to the other one. So um, things that could be better elsewhere. If you're talking single component application, think like FAS or I always, my, my joke application that I always say is like a cat blog. I mean, something along those lines where it's just a simple, straightforward application. Those, those are probably better in other, in other tools. 
we're meant to be these, these complex distributed applications. And um, that's what we're really good at. Um, web front ends, obviously, please run those like in a CDN or wherever else you need them. Um, and the general rules around WebAssembly things apply. If you have like CPS or OS specific code or heavily optimized code, then obviously like you're going to probably be better just compiling it straight to it. Like WebAssembly might eventually get to the level where you can use it for all those like super, super optimized cases, but like there's still a little bit of overhead. So um, yeah, this is the overview. Like WebAssembly lets you run your applications anywhere. Wasm Cloud takes it so you can run them anywhere and connect them together. And then you can distribute them or redistribute them however you want. So anyway, just this, this is just the call to action. If you want to check out what we're doing, QR code on the right or the link that's to our um, our main like GitHub where the project's at. And then we also have our Slack if you want to join us there. So anyway, that is just a quick overview. I'll leave a, let's see, I'm probably right at 15 minutes. So um, we can either do questions or I can pass it right off to um, to the next presentation. Nice job, Taylor. Great on Don. Uh, and incredibly compelling. Uh, so why don't we do some questions real quick? Anybody have any uh, questions you would like to ask Taylor? I love no questions. It feels like I either answered all the questions or I bored you all to death. So, okay. Okay, David. <laughs> I saw those. I saw those contracts uh, were prefixed with Wasm Cloud. Mm -hmm. um, so, can you tell me a little bit more about those contracts and how you define them? Yeah. So those ones are um, actually like that's a backwards compatibility shim. Most of those are actually tied to Wasi HTTP now. Um, once again, we're all halfway through trying to roll it out on things that are currently changing. So, um, like that. That's why it, it says it. But the idea with Wasm Cloud is you're not tied in to the things that we offer inside of the um, the Wasm Cloud host. If you have your own custom contract you want to bring in, we've always supported that. We're going to continue to support that where you can say, you know what, I have this hyper-optimized database at our thing. So I need to do something very specific. Great, write your own custom contract and then everyone at your company can use it and your dependency can roll outside of your of the people consuming it, which is really handy for, you know, like a log4j type incident or things like curl that just happened. Like curl is very mature software with very good developers involved. They still write bugs. We all write bugs. And so the idea is that, like you can swap that out as well. So custom contracts are, are allowed. And then by default, we're supporting all the WASI cloud contracts. So WASI HTTP, WASI key value, like that's something we've been collaborating with, with people at Microsoft and a couple other people in the community who've been collaborating with that of having kind of the standard 80% use case contracts that everybody can support and makes it super simple. So actually that demo is using all of just those contracts. It's using nothing custom. Some cloud prefix was just a, it's a backwards compatibility shim. So things using the old contracts that were, were Wasm Cloud specific are now using those new ones. So that's where we're, um, that's where we're, uh, where we're doing that and allowing support. So you don't have to recompile hosts or redeploy things or do anything special. You just write one of these, th these things I call the provider and then anything else can use it. That's awesome. Thank you, Taylor. Uh, Sven, you have your hand up. Um, hi, Taylor. You mentioned that um, running super optimized code isn't a case for a web assembly, but with Wasm Cloud, you can still have a uh, custom capability provider that's uh, then invoking the super optimized code if you need it, right? Yes, that's correct. That's actually the, the perfect workaround. And that's how we have most people work around things where it's hard to do in WebAssembly. Like some of the stuff around certain crypto things like our not cryptocurrency, crypt cryptography um, uh, is um, done through like providers, right? Because that can be, we, we have the escape hatch of that can be like native code. Um, and we, there's like, there's obviously sandboxing and things we do around that. But um, eventually all of this can be just WASI um, and like WebAssembly and it'll be all that. Right now, a lot of these providers are native code, which does mean you have that workaround of, hey, I need to do super optimized code this. And then you can do that with that provider. Um, so there, there are workarounds that allow you to tie in with the stuff that's not quite there yet. Um, we do that in general, like with most things, like just even outside of that, like Wasm Cloud has a chart that you can install into Kubernetes and then have things with Kubernetes talking to things in Wasm Cloud. So it's all about making sure like we can make that on-ramp as, as easy as possible. 
Awesome. Good question. Uh, do we have any others in the crowd? Going once, going twice. Raphael, you have the floor, sir. Taylor, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let me share my screen. I guess you can see my slides. I'm going to share some slides and I also have a couple of uh, demos to show. Uh, they will be pretty quick. So um, about the Wasm Worker Server, this is what it is about. Um, this is a project that we started uh, a bit longer than a year ago. Uh, this project is uh, focused on developers. So our main focus is for developers to be able to use the languages that they know and write uh, their programs or their endpoints in the in the programming language that they want and they can mix and match all of them we want also that to be easy to use like you only download the wasm worker cell binary and you are done you don't need any extra dependencies so you just download the binary for your arts you run it and and everything works out of the box we also want it to be compatible with our web frameworks, frameworks and platforms. So for example, since we want more developers to come uh, to WebAssembly through Wasm Worker Server, that, that would be one way. Uh, we want people you know, that are familiar with JavaScript or with, for example, Cloudflare workers to be able to run their, their workers out of, out of the box with uh, Wasm Worker Server. And of course, portable, secure, we all know that from WebAssembly. And also, uh, you know, use the capability of this model where it makes sense or where we can uh, pull that. Uh, for example, for this HTTP uh, backend uh, where we are able to open HTTP requests, you can specify an atomal configuration. What are the hosts that you want to, to be able to, to read uh, from your worker? And also we have now since two weeks ago also support for components. Uh, this is a very basic uh, implementation right now, but we you, you can either uh, write your functions uh, in modules, basically with core modules or with components. And so uh, as part of getting more developers on our end, we want to have like very complete documentation. You can, uh, later I will share the, the slides so you can uh, have a look at that. And also we have a lot of different examples for all the languages that we support. And also uh, for, for example, for our container D, Wasm seems integration through the containers folder you see there. Also components, all the examples that we have or many examples that we have for core modules, we use the snapshot to adapter and we build components. And so we run components that way uh, right now. So with the the, the, the adapter, pre, the, the WASI adapter uh, through components. And uh, right now, the, the way that uh, the host and the guest communicates is very, very simple. We pass data through a standard input, a standard output. Uh, you can see here that you know we are sending the data to Python Wasm through a standard input. And then you see the rest Wasm that gets receives the data on the host through Wasm uh, through the standard output. But basically, this is all the, the, the time, all times is the same thing. Uh, we send data. In this case, this is just a JSON. So we have to serialize. Uh, Wasm Worker Server end, we send the the request through uh, JSON, let's say, the, the important, the relevant information about the, the request with standard input, then the SDK on the guest uh, will read that and will uh, provide that information to the guest itself, and then it will produce some kind of output that we will process on the Wasm Worker Server end and get back to the to the HTTP client. Uh, in the end, I, I will talk about that in a second, but yeah. We don't want to do this, uh, like this is the, the current state of things, but of course we don't want to rely on marshalling for doing this or standard input or standard output. This is the very basic implementation on how we are going to, how we are doing this. Uh, the standard error is just forwarded, so you can use that in order to, to log your uh, things on your workers. And then basically this is the extractor marshalling what I was mentioning before. Would the Wasm worker server provides to the guest uh, through a standard input is a JSON that is the contract, let's say. So if you want to provide a new language that we don't support, we just you just provide us an SDK or as we call it a kit. Uh, that processes this information through standard input and then provides uh, some way or some API on the guest side for this to be processed and then an easy way to give back some response and then this is what you give back uh, through this structure. Uh, as of today, we support uh, a number of languages. Of course, anything that supports WASI, we uh, support it out of the box. Uh, then in terms of 
for example, interpreted languages, we have integration uh, through another project that we also um, maintain, which is the WebAssembly language runtime. So uh, Python and Ruby builds, uh, we just download them out of the box uh, with WASM worker servers. It's pretty straightforward. If you have some endpoints on Ruby or some endpoints in Python, you can mix and match as you wish, and this will work out of the box because all, the, all you need to provide in, in the end is a TOML file that specifies where these interpreters are going to be found. And so you just uh, run Watson Worker Server, and it will download the interpreters for you out of the box. And so this is what I was mentioning before. So Watson Worker Server exposes the HTTP. Uh, here we say HTTP API, but this is just an HTTP server, and this is where you reach your endpoints, and it will implement for you routing static assets, so you can uh, have a public folder, public directory, where you just put your static assets over there. Language runtimes, this integration with Python, Ruby, and probably other language runtimes in the, in the future. Uh, everything happens out of the box uh, for you in this case. Also, we have uh, integration with CNN. And so then uh, you have your programs in the file system or on remote deep repositories. And so it's very straightforward for you if you have WASM worker server to run one command and point to a remote deep repository that will be cloned for you out of the box and then execute it. And so you have some functions that will be your endpoints and where you can point people to. And so in terms of features, uh, we support basically in terms of, uh, we have a key value store where that is completely memory based. So we, it's just a single instance, everything in memory. So no, no uh, persistence at all. Uh, so we have key value store and memory variables through WASI, dynamic routes that this is implemented on, on the host side of WASI worker server. And then uh, this is supported on, on all languages right now. And then we also have support for folders, which basically means mounting from the host. Uh, except for JavaScript, that is the only one that is not supported right now. And then HTTP requests uh, is supported uh, on some of them. So the others is just a matter of, uh, you know, sitting down and, and implementing that. So, yeah. And um, yeah, for the future, uh, we want, of course, to enable a more performant guest host communication through components. And so in this case, we want to compose uh, through the component model and you know stop doing this uh, marshalling uh, through standard input, standard output that works right now. Uh, it's a way to move forward, but it's not what we want to, to be. Uh, of course, adding more languages, we also uh, welcome external contributions for that implement more WASI proposals, such as the WASI Cloud Core uh, from the Microsoft people. Um, so all this work that is happening over there, we want to implement many of these things. So, you know, people just have all these out of the box um, when running WASI Core Server. So we they, they don't have to think much about it. They just go to the documentation, see how they can pull that and use that uh, feature uh, out of the box. We also, for example, think on, on how to fetch from other workers. So you might have one workers that one worker that is able to pull information or you know to make a request to other worker um, on the same instance or maybe on another instance that links to the last one uh, where you might want to have multiple WASM worker server instances, not only one as we support right now. And also, for example, allow to register endpoints programmatically. Uh, this is something that is also interesting uh, for people having another piece of software that is able to register endpoints in WASM worker server out of the box without them having to you know, start a new instance uh, when endpoints change. And then there are other things on um, the future like we, we track everything in GitHub, so everything can be found over there. Um, we discuss about uh, all these things over there. So if you are curious or you, um, you just want to have a look at that, uh, that would be great. And so, as I was mentioning before, we are very open to community feedback and contributions. We have good first issues. Uh, if you want to uh, kill some time, you know, um, doing, doing uh, some work, uh, that would be great. Um, yeah, in general, we are very open to, to to talk about what are the next things that we're going to, to do for WASM worker servers. So we are very open in general for that. And then a very simple demo that you know points uh, to how we can reuse uh, software in this way. So I just have um, WASM worker server installed the binary here. I don't know if that's uh, big enough to be honest. One second. Okay. Okay. 
So you, you just run Watson Worker Server and then uh, your repository, in this case, this one. And then you can say my Git folder is examples yes, basic. Here is where we have one example. Uh, for example, this is Watson Worker Server examples yes, basic. And this just contains an index.js file. And so I'm able to just run that out of the box. And here it will clone the repo. Uh, it will make a shallow clone. And then uh, you can just go ahead and make the request. So let's just uh, okay, so that's uh, what you would expect from that. Uh, it's just a JavaScript that provides a header and then serves some some content there. And so that works uh, just fine. And then you can also run that. Uh, here I clone the Watson Worker Server repo. You can just run it locally. So it's it's the very, very same thing. That works out of the box as well. And um, we support, uh, to some extent, compatibility with, for example, Cloudflare workers. So if you are able to you run uh, this very same worker with, um, with Wrangler, this will work out of the box as well. And so, I mean, it's a very generic worker. It's a very simple one. Okay, so that's it. That's one. And it will also set the header as expected. That's it. Um, and yeah. And then uh, you can you can serve this on, on some folder structure, like for example, um, you have several workers, like you want to have one application where you have different endpoints. I copied the very same file here, the very same worker, but you might have different endpoints on different languages, different tabs, also with different endpoints. And then you, you, you know, just uh, run that um, with this, uh, the root part, and it will identify all the paths and uh, it will serve them on the proper place, like app A, app B. Up a endpoint one, endpoint two, and so on. Uh, so this will, will work out of the box, and so you can you can you know mix and match all the all the different endpoints for your application. And yeah, that's everything I wanted to share regarding Western Worker Server. So yeah, if you have any questions. I'll kick it off. <clears throat> what kind of difficulties did you run into with uh, dynamic runtimes as opposed to a lot of what we see is mostly like statically linked, uh, you know, uh, compiled languages? Um, and I'm curious what the, the, was there an intentional use of those languages? Of the interpreted ones or? I mean, like Indeed. you can Indeed. use you can use Python or Ruby. Like uh, we provide a way for you to download the the interpreter, and then of course uh, they are. If you if you need really uh, like you know dynamic loading on the interpreter side, this is going to be harder. But uh, if you just need the very basic things that comes from with interpreter, then you'll be would serve with it. Like uh, you are able to say on the Tumble file which is the runtime that you need. Python, Ruby, or whatever, and they will be downloaded from from our own builds. Is that your question? You or... mean not? You mean not everybody in the world uses Rust or C? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also I didn't mention that, but the, the only exception in our case is that JavaScript one is already uh, into the Watson Worker Server binary. So uh, in terms of JavaScript, you don't need anything else uh, just for Python and Ruby. Uh, but JavaScript one through Javi uh, will be just uh, served out of the box. So you don't need to download the interpreter for that. Very cool. Thanks. Any other questions out there? Um, I'd be interested to like, this is just more, this is more of a comment. I'm not trying to be that annoying guy at the conference who <laughs> goes and stands up on a, no, that's not, but I, I, I love that the, you're also working on the moving in like the WASI cloud core. So I think there's an opportunity here, like there's right now we're seeing multiple projects. So I think like as a working group, that's something we should try to make sure we're either contributing to or commenting on is the, the WASI cloud proposals and, and the work there, because I think that's something that for CNCF space is going to be very critical to have for people building most applications. So 
I, I just want to say that like I'm, I'm glad to see like you are all working on that too and um like I know we've been interested Microsoft's been interested so like I think as we we should keep an eye on that as a working group because it was really cool to see that that's all working and are in progress to work as well Absolutely. Thank you, Taylor. So uh, also the thing is that, you know, we want people to see that WebAssembly is useful, right? And so when people come and say, okay, how do I open an HTTP request? How do I make an HTTP request to somewhere else? And we say, okay, you cannot really do that. It's like, okay, then why would I want this thing for, right? And this is part of it, right? They will want to show that WebAssembly is useful and this is how you can make that uh, usefulness, right? And then it's like, it's a different level in the sense that you can make an HTTP request and and how do you block a uh, bad actor doing an SCP request to some, somewhere else? Uh, you just point to the right hosts, right? It's like you don't need to do some kind of Selenux or thing like that uh, that goes uh, lower on the stack, right? It's like you say where you want to, to, to where you are, able, you are able to reach, and then this is your list of, of hosts where you can make requests, right? And this is kind of the sweet spot where we want to show that WebAssembly can be useful and it can also be safe in a, in a way that is understandable, right? And very easy to, to, to do. Any other questions in the crowd? Going once, going twice. Raphael, thank you so much. And thank awesome you, folks. That was, that was fantastic. Oh, uh, we have a question in the chat. Uh, let's see. I would like to know uh, the GitHub link your pre uh, for the previous examples. Could you post it in the chat? <laughs> I'm going to do that. I was going to do that. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Um, I will start the count again. Going once. Going twice. Questions are closed. Thank you so much, Raphael. Thank well you. Done. Really appreciate it. And it's so cool. I, I love seeing uh, the language support expanding. Like the, it, it was, you know, my comment was flippant. Uh, however, I, I think it's it's completely reasonable that we, you know, WebAssembly needs to meet developers where they're at. And you, you're talking about it as well. And I, I think uh, you know, Taylor's showing it too. How do you do really meaningful things, right? How do you do meaningful things in the language uh, of, you know, that your native language, your, and we can't expect everybody that is gonna go to, you know, a different language to do these things that they're comfortable with. Uh, so. Very cool to see that. And I just add on to that, David, like that's why we've been talking about the component model so much. If you're new to the WebAssembly space is because that's what it does. Like we, all of us were kind of in the same boat. We had to add bespoke support for each language. Like, so it was always Rust at least, and then a couple others. And now with the component model, like it, anything that can be a component can run in any of these systems. That's what's so cool about all of it. Um, so you get the portability and the polyglot so that's that's why a lot of us are excited about Wasm. Like that's what makes me all giddy um, inside is that kind of stuff. Cause it's super nice to have that. Hundred uh, percent. Let's see. All right. So next uh, on the agenda are KubeCon talks that are coming up. Um, I believe we have uh, five. Was it one? Two, Six uh, KubeCon talks. Oh, thank you. Somebody added uh, Rex's. Uh, yeah, that, that was me. I just tacked it on. I, I tacked it on at the end. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this this list is, may not be exhaustive. Um, I may have missed something, but if uh, I did, please uh, consider adding it to the list. Um, so uh, one that I'm I'm super I. I'm super hyped for. I can't wait to see a new Flippy book come out. <laughs> So uh, we got Karen and Matt uh, from Vermeon, uh, you know, talking, uh, trying to bring uh, WebAssembly into, uh, you know, explain it to me like I'm five, you know, and show show the kids the book and they'll get it too. Uh, and I, I I think that's something we absolutely need. Uh, so much of it feels like uh, science project work, uh, where it's extremely complex. Um, it can be easier, and let's make it easier. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, we have bringing cloud native WASM to the mainstream with WASM Working Group. Uh, that's where we're at. 
And uh, so folks are going to be talking about, uh, you know, the group, what do we do? What is our intention? What are our goals? Uh, so we have uh, Shave and uh, Kevin uh, Hoffman. Um, then we have uh, tutorial. Uh, all these links are in the doc. So please, uh, if you're interested, I'm not going to go through uh, you know, all the details there. Uh, but please uh, take a look there. Um, then we have a tutorial talk uh, where it's going to be WebAssembly containers. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be spin, it's going to be running spin on Kubernetes. It's going to be, you know, get your hands on and see how stuff works. That's going to be a fun talk too. Uh, we have Run Wazzy uh, from uh, Onhill and uh, Francisco. Uh, so if you aren't, uh, if you haven't dove into Run Wazzy, um, these actually, since you're here, Anil, uh, would you like to uh, pitch what the talk is? Uh, Anil, would you like to sorry. talk about your talk? Oh, sorry, <laughs> I, missed, I missed the question. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, so the, the idea that we have for this specific talk is to try to show like a way in which you have a uh, um, cloud native application running Kubernetes as today, and then how WebAssembly can help. What are the good parts and the bad parts about consolidating, moving them into the WebAssembly space? How you can that? How this is? Is this a process difficult? Is there any way in which you can maintain stuff at the same time while you are moving things from different way? So that's the kind of, of uh, presentation that Francisco and I wants to give for, for this specific audience at, at KubeCon because we think it's really important to show that there is no like disruption in the way that you are working today that you need to drop all your work and start from scratch to implement things but that there are ways in which you can start moving from the current architecture that you have today to the next one and see the benefits and the good and the bad things because as Taylor Ross mentioned in his talk sometimes it's not like everything fits in WebAssembly space. There are things in which it will work better, you have benefits, you have problems. So that's the kind of things that we want to, to show in this talk. Cool, cool. That's, yeah, that's cool like a very interesting one. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> uh, Taylor, can you give a little background on delivering backends like frontends uh, with WebAssembly? Yeah, so the whole, the whole conceit of the talk is that it's um, going to be about um, you have this idea of deploying like your front end code across CDNs deployed in various places. And it's like, what if we could do that with normal code rather than um, just with the front ends? And so it's the idea of, of how you can, how you can do that kind of crazy distributed thing with an actual application and um, do it with actually, it's a funny demo application, but it's a very much a like real world demo application. Um, I've, I've already seen Brooks show it off a little bit. So um That'll be it's it's gonna be a fun one. Brooks is a great demoer if you've never watched him before. He's not here, so I can I can make him blush um later. And so yeah, he he's a great demoer. So that'll be a fun one if you want some an engaging demo and kind of a description showing how this all fits together um to really build something cool and distributed. That sounds exciting. I look forward to that one as well. Um Excellent. So we have some talks out there. Uh, please check them out, uh, see what works for you, and hopefully see you all there. Um, actually, I won't be there, unfortunately, but um, hopefully you all uh, are there. <laughs> all right. So we have new and notable in uh, WebAssembly. Calvin, would you like to uh, kick that off? Uh, sure. So the uh, uh, Bycode Alliance uh, project for the WebAssembly registry uh, work. Uh, we're doing the first uh, release of it. This is a uh, very early preview release, but um, we're trying to release something ahead of um, WASI preview two uh, dates uh, coming up in November and December. Um, and uh, so the, the registry version um, uh, 0.2 uh, is going to be released on Friday. So um, We'll be talking about it more in public and maybe doing a blog post around it. And you should be starting to see some more things around that. Um, and uh, yeah, feel free to reach out any questions about it. Awesome. And to be clear, uh, the registry does what? Ah, so it is a, um, well, it, it is designed to be a federated registry, but federation is uh, not currently implemented. 
Um, and there's not going to be a single centralized registry, but it's a uh, verifiable uh, design where you can um, audit and uh, see that the entire state of a registry or the package history uh, is um, untampered with and is correct. Um, and uh, it's designed to be the component model uh, WebAssembly registry. Uh, so there's a lot of integration for um, uh, component model and web, WebAssembly module specific things. So uh, that's what we're working on. So does that kind of line with like uh, cargo or NPM or things of that nature? Yeah. Um, so there's it, it, there is some discussion on whether uh, when you're going to publish maybe you, to something like this uh, word registry, whether um, there may be some like uh, CI CD processes where you may actually want to publish to those other uh, language ecosystem specific registries as well. Uh, that's still an open question, but uh, it's going to be something of that nature, um, uh, but a federated one. So um, yeah, and the de design for Thanks. both the developer library use case as well as the deployment artifact use case. Awesome, thank you. Sorry to put you on the spot. Uh, no, just no, to make I, sure that uh, folks understand you know, kind of what what's working on there. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get better about talking about it here, in as soon as we get on the other side of some of these things too. It's really fantastic work. Thank you for all that you've done there. Uh, Danny as well, and others in, in the community. Uh, Taylor, do you want to talk about resources? Sorry, I was having trouble hitting the unmute button. Um, troubles continue today. Anyway, so um, the uh, the main thing with resources, I just wanted to let people know that they've landed they're still being kind of like rolled out but they've landed officially i think they're in wasm time now um they're obviously in wit and um that's kind of changing the way so so uh, it's kind of it's going to change the way how a lot of things work because it allows you to like instantiate something and then be able to call methods on that just like you'd expect from like a struct in any language kind of thing is the way i always think of it but anyway th those things are landing they're not there but it's going to cause breaking changes um so like just keep an eye on like wasm time and and wit and all that and then um definitely like if people have experiences like implementing it and want a knowledge share like we can we can probably circle around that in the next few weeks whenever we meet and say like hey i like figured it out is if anyone's stuck like here's how i did it or whatever just so we can all roll out that work as as we go crashing towards preview too. Like we, I know that those things are going to do it. The problem is I have such a hard time finding documentation. Let me, let me link you what I do know about in just a second. I'm going to go dig those up. I know there's the one in, in the wit syntax description, but I don't know if there's much else besides like the actual design doc. And I'm not sure how accurate it is. Um, so I'm going to go pull those up and figure it out. And then we can probably write something together as we try to stumble our way through it is my hope. Um, so let me let me go grab those and I'll drop them in the chat in just a second. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and I'm here. Um, yeah, so just wanted to mention that um, I don't know if everyone which is in the WebAssembly space is aware about the W3 group which is basically the group behind the official um, WebAssembly specification. Uh, I know that Luke, which is also in the talk, he's, uh, he was presenting the component model there, but uh, I think last week they had a in-person meeting, in-person online meeting in, in Munich. Um, they were talking about a lot of different standards about WebAssembly, not only related to WASI, but for example, multi-memory, all those. So uh, Salim, which is a developer from JetBrains, and he's pretty, pretty involved in the Kotlin and Wasm um, space. I think he's, he's the lead engineer there. He collected a lot of notes in the uh, Twitter thread that I pasted in the in the documentation. So I highly recommend you to check because there are, there were a lot of interesting discussion about things that hopefully will land some in in all the things that we are talking about. Thank you, Angel. Uh, 
anything in closing? Want to be respectful of everybody's time. We are nearing our end. If not, then I thank you all so very much for attending. I thank our uh, demoers, uh, Taylor, uh, Raphael. Thank you very much. Uh, excellent. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing everybody next time around. Thank you. Thank you for hosting it, David. Everyone. <laughs> Thanks for the notes. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.